All right, I will try to go fast enough that you guys don't miss too much of the break. This work was done by my PhD student, uh, David Uthis, who couldn't come. Uh, he's working at uh, NRL doing chat analysis. He obviously did this as his PhD. His uh, postdoc is about up, so if anybody wants a good postdoc, let me know or give me a call. We're going to be talking about the traveling tournament problem. If you haven't heard about it, I'll explain it briefly. We used um, some bells and whistles on a, a IDA star to solve it. And I'll talk about the results and conclude. Um, so the traveling tournament problem uh, was designed by um, Michael Trick in 2001. And it was based on the work he did um, trying to schedule Major League Baseball. In real life scheduling, at least in Major League Baseball, there's all sorts of constraints, uh, general constraints, and then specific constraints of certain teams. You don't want to play an early game way up north because you'll freeze. You don't want to play a middle of the season game way down south because you'll boil, et cetera, et cetera. The TTP problem tries to abstract all those specific things uh, and give it a general combinatorial optimization problem. So what they try to do is they try to construct a double round robin, so that means each team plays every other team twice, once at each team's home. And you want to minimize the total travel distance of all the teams in the league. You also have hard constraints. So at most constraints means that you can't play more than three consecutive away games or home games. And no repeats means you can't play the same team back to back. So what you end up with is something that looks like this. We have four teams, so we have six time slots. Each of those time slots is basically a traveling salesman problem. Each of these traveling salesman problems has to be coordinated such that if um, the Mets play the Montreal Expos at, at um, time one, then at time one the Montreal Expos better be playing the Mets. Right? So everything has to be coordinated across all these traveling tournament problems. Sorry, traveling salesman problems. It's just one traveling tournament problem. Because of this, it's a very difficult problem. It was invented about in 1999. That's when they were doing four teams. So four teams means I think you have uh, six slots. And by 2008, roughly 10 years later, they've gotten all the way up to 18. All right, so it's a very hard problem. This is specifically solving it optimally. There are also people who try to find uh, reasonable solutions, uh, lower bounds, um, upper bounds, uh, and obviously you can do better when you're looking for a satisfying solution. Do better, i.e. they can solve larger problems. All right, so what we did was create an iterative uh, deepening a star approach to um, find optimal solutions for the TTP, and we solved all the way up till um, 10 instances of several of the problems. So, IDA star is basically based off of A star, so A star is doing best first search. The first solution finds it's optimal and expands a minimal number of nodes. The weakness is obviously is that it has to store a lot of things in memory. Iterative deepening does multiple iterations of a depth first search. It expands the same nodes as A star, but it uses linear memory. All right, the weakness is the multiple iterations means that you can expand uh, nodes multiple times. All right, our approach built on a lot of other work that came before. We have lots of special purpose things in there specific to the traveling tournament problem to make it run faster. I'm not going to talk about these. There in the paper, I'm going to talk about the new things we did in the paper. All right? And those were basically three things that I'm going to talk about today, force deepening, elite pass, and subtree skipping. Um, and there were also problem-specific TTP things we did, which uh, I can talk about in questions if you want, but I'm not going to talk about them. So what force deepening is basically trying to do is make IDA star not do as many iterations. So whenever you have non-uniform costs on the edges, what um, IDA star can do 
is it can basically, for every iteration, expand like one node. So here is at the top level, and it says, OK, two is the smallest. I'm going to expand that. And then it says, all right, well, now I'm going to redo IDA star, start at the beginning again, and I'm going to enter one more node, and I'm going to restart IDA star again, and I'm going to expand one more node. This is obviously doesn't always just expand one more node, but this is the kind of thing that can happen with IDA star when you have these non-uniform costs. So our solution is to force each heuristic limit to be one depth deeper. So we're going to take the smallest depth bound at the next step. What this does is caps the number of iterations to the depth of the tree. It's still going to guarantee optimality as long as it's constraint satisfaction problem. And what I mean by that is that all the solutions are at the same depth of the tree. If you remember our picture back here, all the solutions are going to be at depth six. I can't have a solution at depth four. I can't have a solution at depth five. It has to be at depth six. So because of this, I can do this um, for steepening, and it's still going to guarantee that I'm going to find uh, the optimal solution. All right? Uh, the second thing we did is what's called the weak paths, and what this means is that we're going to record the path in the search tree that had the best estimated solution, and when I do um, the next iteration of IDA star, I'm going to start from that partial solution in the next iteration. And what this means is that, especially in the last iteration, if the optimal solution is a child of the elite path, that I'm going to find it quickly. And that will happen any time my heuristic estimate gets very accurate towards the end of the, the, once I get very close to the goal, which again, a lot of heuristics do. So that gives me some extra bang for the buck. The last thing we did is subtree skipping. So basically, this was run in parallel. So you take your search tree, you take the first X levels, you make each one of those a subtree, you run all those subtrees on separate um, computers or whatever. What subtree skipping does is allow us to say, okay, that subtree is already past our current F bound, we don't have to expand that subtree at all, and I can just prune out lots of subtrees and not solve them at all. At this iteration, it reduces the node expansions per iteration. So the results that we have. Here is four steepening elite paths and subtree skipping. Um, and what you see here is 100%. That's how much um, I'm trying to remember whether this is time or nodes. Uh, I think it's time. Uh, how much time was spent when I didn't have any, it just made 100% here. As soon as I do force deepening, you can see that the numbers on these three domains, these are three domains of the traveling tournament problem. The first one is National League, um, baseball in the US, Super 8, that's a rugby league, and Galaxy is um, playing games on exoplanets around the galaxy. Uh, doesn't happen much. Uh, and you can see that the big reduction we're getting here is with the force deepening. It goes down to like 5% of the time. For Super 8, it goes down way below that. Galaxy 8, we don't get as much of a reduction. The elite pass and the subtree skipping do reduce it more. They don't reduce it as much as the um, force deepening. And that's the one that really saved us the most time. We also compare this to other people that work in the field. Um, DFS star was previous work that we did um, using uh, an IDA star variant. Branch and Price is a integer programming technique. This problem tends to be worked on by constraint satisfaction people, um, integer programming people, and AI people, so it gets quite a mix. We did four different uh, traveling tournament data sets and compared to these two techniques. And you can see here that um, once we get up here to, let's say, the 8, circ 8, we were solving it in 22 seconds, and Branch and Price took 300,000 seconds. 
Um, so we were getting quite a big reduction. Uh, now, if you'll notice here, um, the new TIDA star doesn't always win. So down here on Super 8, our old technique actually did better. And that just had to do, it got really close to a um, bound very quickly, so it had only one long iteration at the end, and when we changed the TIDA star, it had two long iterations at the end. The Super 8 is really weird. It has a lot of teams very close together and a lot of teams really far apart. And because of that, I think if you just hit one of those breaks where it jumps a lot, you can, um, you can get very strange behavior. Our final accomplishment was we were the first people to solve several of the 10 team instances. Uh, the wall clock time to solve these 10 team instances um, was, you can see, some of them are like 769,000 minutes. Now that's wall clock time over 120 CPUs. So that's a lot of time. Basically going from the 18 instances to the 10 team instances was a jump of roughly five orders of magnitude in terms of time. So these get difficult very quickly. So in conclusion, uh, we created this new IDA star approach for the traveling tournament problem. Again, that was the problem we were working on. It will work on any um, constraint satisfaction type problem. It's optimal as long as all the solutions are at the same depth. We did this using for steepening of leak pass and subtree skipping. And we were the first to solve these two 10 instances problems. As far as future work, basically this technique won't work anymore. Right, so to do 12 team instances, it would probably run for decades. We're unwilling to try that. Um, so basically another approach is needed. And this tends to be what happens with the traveling tournament problem. Somebody comes in with a new idea and they solve one more team. And then it doesn't work anymore. And then somebody else comes in with a new idea and they solve one more team. Right? So it is sort of frustrating possibly using like a branch and price approach combined with our approach and somehow um, might give us the next level, but that's it. Thank you very much.